What you're listening to is the Who and Him number six, the oldest piece of music that actually could be reconstructed. It was discovered in the royal palace of Ugarit, northern Canaan, now modern day Syria, and is believed to date back to 1600 BCE, some 3400 years ago. The song itself is inscribed on a small clay tablet and was discovered in the early 1950s, along with 36 other tablets. But the Hurin Hymn number 6 is the only tablet that was preserved well enough to be read and eventually performed. The tablet itself contains instructions for a song on a lyre, an instrument that looks like a small harp and is written in a dialect of the ancient Hurin language. It also includes partially obscured lyrics that appear to be a prayer to Nikal, the goddess of orchards. The version you see on screen is a translation by Hans Johann Thiel and is considered to be the closest to the original spirit of the song. Whilst the Hurin Hymn is the oldest piece of music that can be reconstructed, it is not the oldest song that exists. That title goes to the Lipit Ishtar, which is another tablet discovered in Sumer, modern-day Iraq, but this time from 1950 BCE, roughly 4,000 years ago. It's made up of instructions on how to play a hymn, but the trouble is, it's only a small fragment of a large piece of work and so its instructions do not give us enough information to reconstruct the actual song. The oldest form of music in its broader sense is the many musical instruments, mostly bone flutes, that have been unearthed in prehistoric excavation sites. The oldest musical instrument ever discovered is the Hoerfels flute, dated to around 35,000 to 40,000 years ago, making it the earliest evidence of music ever been performed by humans. And whilst we're still able to produce a sound on these instruments, we don't know what kind of songs were performed on them. So, back to the Hearn Hymn. Decoding the song itself proved to be a challenge. Unlike our standard sheet music, which notates pitch and duration, the Hearn Hymn gives instructions on where a musician needs to position their fingers on the instrument. It doesn't give any information on how the lyre was tuned, nor does it give lengths and durations of the notes. And finally, to make it more confusing, the interval system on the tablet was unclear and required some creative thinking to figure out. The first attempt to decode it was in 1974 by Dr. Anne Kilmer. There are no performances of her version online, so here's a digitised edition of her song. By far, the most popular attempt was Dr. Richard Dumbrill in 1998. His version sounds as follows. Today, there are many other interpretations of the song done by artists all across the world. So, I've linked them in the description below, as well as academic papers and links for any further reading. And whilst the real melody of the Huron hymn will be likely lost to history, these reconstructions act as a bridge to the music of ancient and forgotten peoples many thousands of years ago. <laughs> 